All right, greeting storm rage. A lot of stuff has changed. Even in the last two weeks, a lot of members have been added. And it kind of came to the realization a lot of people are new and don't know the whole story, history of storm rage. And a lot of things have changed over time. Um, this isn't, you know, a generic Orlando instinct group. That's not what this is. You know, this came from a very special place and has evolved and changed over time to what it is now. So, uh, I just want to take you on this sort of journey from the August of 2016 to now, and then talk a little bit about the future. So, uh, first, you know, first things first, I was out there really, really on the gym. My favorite part of this game is walking out there and seeing those level 10 instinct gems. You know, I know we're the underdog, we're the you know, low, lowest population, but you know what? We have the best players, and that's, I firmly believe this from the beginning. So, what I was doing, really, really on, I was like, I was getting to put that Paris in a gym. Back when you like, only train with one Pokemon, I was like, alright, I'm gonna put a Paris in a gym, use a Parasect, because it's, or use a Gold Bat to attack it, because it's a really one sided matchup where you have double resistances and double super effective, and I just knocked that out really quickly. And I would just, you know, use like no potion, I would just go to gym after gym, drop a Paris in, build it up. And uh, everyone who stopped by, I would say hi, you know, if it was an enemy player, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, actually, you guys got me. And they knocked down the gym pretty quickly. But it was a friendly player, I was like, hey, you know, I enjoyed it, I talked to him a little bit. And I, I noticed this happened quite a bit, and I was like, I need to make a group. You know, I need to make a Facebook group. So one night, <laughs> me and uh, Richard Ayala, or Richie Rich, um, he doesn't play much anymore, but back in the early games, he, uh, he came over to the gym and was like, yo, let's, I'll drive you over to the other gym, let's build that gym up as well. And I was like, okay, build that gym up as well. This is a friend request, made the group. And then, you know, he, I'm over here closer to Celebration 182. He was further down by the Kiss Me Go Karts um, and the uh, Walmart 182. And I was like, all right, this is the power plant. This, this, this is the area we're going to control and we're going to keep the level 10 instinct. And day after day, we would go out. If a gym was knocked down, we were building that thing up real quick. Um, you know, remember back before you could train with six Pokemon, level 10 gyms were fairly rare. You know, people hadn't really gotten used to, you know, and people either know how to train gyms or... You know, they just hadn't gotten used to it. So, like, people seeing a level 10 gym, I was like, whoa. And then having lots of level 10 gyms and then seeing a leg was even more surprising. So, you know, and then things kind of evolved from there. You know, every, people we met you know, in person, we invited into the group. The, at the time, this was a secret group. So, uh, I was accepting no online invites. I was doing no online recruiting. Um, only people you met in person. No, I was, I was pretty strict I was, I was on that. Um, anyway, so... Yep, time went on. I remember, you know, the days of, I have a video on my YouTube channel where I, I drove through the whole, I was on the bus, I think, at that time, um, went through the whole power plant, and I had, I had a screen recording of every single gym, and what I was in every gym, and just swipe, 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 move on to the next gym, called the Fury of the Storm. And that was before Gym Hunter, that was before London Pokemon, and we were still doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, good times back then. But, um, yeah. Time went on, got some more members, uh, you know, Richie Rich, he, he, he left the game, you know, a lot, a lot of power players were in the beginning, but, um, you know, more people came in, and we started, you know, getting a little more acuity, you know, the people who were playing a bunch that I knew were being instinct players that were playing a bunch that I didn't know, and then they started inviting each other, and the group started growing, and then, well, it kind of kind of stalled out for a little bit, and we were like, you know what, let's, let's go... So closed. You know, let's let's let people find us. You know, let's create a, let's create a group that's a little bit larger. Let's expand. You know, why just work fucking one two? Let's go. Let's let's get more gyms. Let's get more instinct presence in Orlando. So that's what we did. We made a closed group. Um, and oh, I missed I missed a very important part. Right before I went closed, um, that was our confrontation with Team Rocket. Team Rocket really early on. Um, Team Rocket is a group. Is another group of, uh, wasn't a, it still is, but it's a group of Pokemon Go players. And uh, they were all three teams, Mystic, Valor, and uh, Instinct, and uh, they met at Kiss Me Lakefront. You know, this is a group that was hanging out at Kiss Me Lakefront all night, and, you know, through seeing each other all night, that's, that's how that group formed. Well, you know, very different style of recruiting, very different goals. You know, uh, James Barr at the time was the leader, and, uh, yeah, um, you know, we, me and Richie, we're building on those level 10 gyms, and, uh, yeah, fairly on, like, fairly on, earlier on in the group, probably, uh, late September, yeah, it was late September, um, one of the Team Rocket members approached Richie and was like, 
hey, you, you want to, you know, we can get you, we can make some of these gyms stronger. We can, you know, we have people that'll knock the bottom Pokemon of the gym out and then, you know, replace all your own stuff. And Richie, me, me and him, we thought just to like, we're like, that's extremely lazy. Why, why are you sabotaging your own teammates just to get a spot? We're the one who built these gyms. There's a reason they're level 10 gyms. That's because of him, because of me, really early on. Anyway, this created a confrontation. James got involved. James Barr, the leader of Team Rocket. Those two started going at it over a bunch of personal issues, in-game stuff. And it basically, you know, even me and me and James started going, you know, just, just talking things out. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> you can knock them down. That's fine. We'll build them back up. This has been my attitude the entire time. Botter spoofers back then didn't matter. I was like, building up a gym is not hard. <laughs> You're more than welcome to knock it down if you want. Try me. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so James, he was drumming the, you know, banging the drums over, you know. Kill Storm Rage, beat Storm Rage, you know, destroy all their gems. Like everyone knew where we were. Cause we weren't hiding. We were like this stretch of one to I mean, he referred to it as bowling. You know, we're gonna knock you down like bowling pins. Were his uh, were his words. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, he took. I remember the first initial push. He took about five gems. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Richie kind of laughed it off. He built him back up. I was actually at Europe at this time, so like imagine now I'm, I'm out of Europe. My, my freaking there's a freaking gang war going on. I'm like, oh no. Um, so I came back. Things are fine, you know. Aaron Littlefield or, I, or Irish Riot, Richie Rich, uh, Thiago back in the day. Um, I don't think Life Lies was in on that, but he was around. He was around. But uh, yeah, all these original members they held the, they held the power plant. It was totally fine. I, after that, we came back. We kept expanding. We kept expanding. We kept on going west. We were hitting Celebration. We were hitting the Water Tower. We were going east to Kissimmee. Um, to the point where we had the entire stretch from Celebration to downtown Kissimmee on lockdown. If a gym ever went down. It didn't even take you know certain players like me or Richie. Like people just knew that was instinct territory, and the gym would get built back up. Um, really awesome thing to see happen in kind of like a little mini ecosystem of Pokemon Go. So that happened. Well, that's when that's when we decided. Okay, let's expand. That's when that, that's when the whole uh, secret to closed uh, transition occurred. But um, yeah. Yeah, we, we, went, we went through all this. I remember, uh, I remember specifically, uh, went down to Kissimmee Lakefront. I wasn't a huge lakefront person. I never really was. I'd show up like once, maybe twice a week, even in the heyday. Um, and it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a little bit far out of the way. I just, I don't, the Pokedex has never been my thing. I'm just not, not a huge lakefront person. So I went down there, I remember once, and uh, I started chatting with Team Rocket guys. Cause, you know, at the point, uh, early on in the game, I was interested. I was interested in what they were all about. And uh, I remember uh, <laughs> some Instinct players from Team Rocket were chatting, and I was like, "Oh, hey, you know, if you're Instinct, you know, I got, I just built up two gyms on 192. If you uh, need some uh, spaces, just let me know." And one of the one of the people sitting down looks at me, he's like, "Are you Storm Rage?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Go f yourself." I'm like, "Wow, we have a reputation." <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I had this really simple goal, and now I'm just walking up and getting told to go f yourself. I'm like, "All right." You know, things have changed. He's not a part of Team... That guy's not a part of Team Rocket anymore. A new leadership of Team Rocket. Ivan is fantastic. Um, you know, I've, I, I go to their meetups all the time. I'm actually a part of their leadership over there. But, um... No, like... It was crazy, you know, the, the early days of, like, the reputation we had. Well, let's, let's fast forward a little bit. Yeah, we take Hunter's Creek. We take more downtown Kissimmee. You know... We're still strategizing. You know, we have we have you know six Pokemon use of prestiging, you know Miracle Grow, all this, all these sort of things. You know, these are all kind of gameplay things. I don't, I don't think are too big of a deal. Like Miracle Grow is a strategy where we use Executor. Uh, we stacked Executors when we first started a gym, and that allowed us to use Parasects and Venomoths to extremely quickly build up a gym and very potion efficiently. Um, uh, Bubble Strat was a thing back then, but the difference between Bubble Strat, Ditto Strat, and sorry, Ditto Strat, Miracle Grow versus the Infinite Strategies. Uh, I, I refer to them all as Infinite Strategies, Bubble Strat, Volt Switch, Gasly, whatever it may be. Um, those Infinite Strategies, they put a really weak Pokemon in that any player can knock out really quickly. If you start off with Miracle Grow or uh, a strong Ditto, um, then 
that deter by, that by itself deters a lot of players, and then that gives other legitimate players more time to stop by and drop. So that's 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 kind of like what was going on there, and that's how we did it. That's how we started this whole string off. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's fast forward. So that was Team Rocket. You yeah, have Team Rocket. We kind of came together. Um, let's fast forward to last week because that was interesting. So uh, I got to go to Cranes Roost for the first time with uh, Josh McQuillan. Shout out to him. And uh, I met the leaders of the Mystic War Party. Um, yeah, this is a group of uh, players on the north side of Orlando. You know, I met them, got to meet uh, Stanishki. Um, he showed me pictures. Like they're doing raise like 15, 20 people. They're going out. They have pictures. You know, they're doing all this sort of stuff. I'm like, wow. You know, I'd kind of got a taste of like the community, but like, and seeing that and like the potential, I was like, these guys are doing something. You know, we, why, why are we waiting for Niantic to do events? Why are we waiting for Niantic to ban botters? We could just make our own communities and do this ourselves. You know, we enjoy this game. The players love this game. Love going outside, experiencing new things, meeting new people. Pokemon, what, you know, we love these things, why don't we just embrace this community for what it is, so, um, that's kind of, kind of seeing what they've all done up there, I was like, you know what, let's, you know, I'll, sorry, no, one more step back, one more step back, um, I came to realize, you know, this group that I had started, you know, Storm Rage, along with IE2, had grown into the, like the instant group. We had a reputation, you know. P I've seen Reddit rage threads on like the most innocent people, you know, the classic Reddit rage thread about Baker's Galval, you know, calling her a dirty spoofer, yada yada yada. You know, we all laugh it off, but you know they exist. Um, Facebook post, you know, you know, calling out Storm Rage for being the, you know, the dirty spoof on my too. I'm like, that's that's bullshit. <laughs> like we've been here since the very beginning. Um, So, yeah, building up gyms, gyms, teamwork, strategy. That's what we've been doing since the very beginning. But you know what? I think we can take it another step. I think we can create an actual community, a community of instinct players. Um, recently, we kind of banded together uh, a little bit of Team Rocket, Storm Rage. We're like, we need to get rid of Flatbush. Flatbush is a former Team Rocket member. Uh, he likes, he's bought a lot of accounts, likes to put uh, very offensive uh, names um, with them, and he just spams them over, he bots, you know, cl classic, classic, um, thug, whatever you want to call them. Well, uh, we're like, you know what, we're going to find his gems, knock them all out, and we start reporting them. So we did that, he went from, on the other end of Pokemap, uh, scanners, he went 55, he went from 55 gems down to 8 in about a week. Um, now he's taking some gems off the scanner, so he's a little bit, but he's not nearly as active, but... Um, you know, that's why we're doing this raid, and speaking of, oh, this raid on, uh, Thursday, which, speaking of raids, um, with Storm Rage, my kind of, we're actually the future is, let's, yeah, let's strengthen this community, let's get to know each other, let's do in-person stuff, let's invite other people, I'm talking, yeah, raiding Florida Mall, uh, Thursday, I'm coming, at least the next four weeks, we'll see how it goes, um, we might change the time, we might change the days, time, whatever it may be, but, um, Thursdays, from 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Uh, hit an area, destroy all the gems. Like, destroying a gem is really easy. It doesn't take a lot of potions. You don't have to commit a lot. Just hang out. Just hang out. Tap your phone for a little bit. And botters can't compete with that. You know, if you have, if you have strength in numbers, like, you can wipe down the whole area real quick. Anyway, yeah. Let's do that. Raids on Thursdays, Friday at 11, and then Dizzy Springs meetups at... Uh, 5 o'clock until about 8 o'clock, and then if you need some gems, let's go hit up some gems. That's kind of uh, how I see that going. And if you want to stay out and hang out, Disney Springs is a fantastic place. Hang out. Um, I encourage you to hang out. 